uh, 19th century, uh, there was no really great organized education in the state. There was a lot of private education. It's not until the early 20th century that there are county schools. There were little village schools scattered all over the state. And many of these were one-room schools. According to the educational historian Ellis Hartford, who was the author of The Little White Schoolhouse, one-room school teachers made EKU. At its peak, there were nearly 8,500 one-room schoolhouses in Kentucky, and each school was only as good as the teacher who taught there and no more. So the state normal school, EKU as we know it today, was established to train such teachers across the state to go back and teach at one-room schoolhouses throughout the state of Kentucky. Most of the teachers who taught in these one-room schools or in towns and cities that had a little more education, maybe even the high school, uh, got their education at schools like Central University. And finally, the state legislature uh, in the late 19th century began to organize education a little bit more and finally develop a funding system from the state level that would go down to the local county systems. And that uh, is eventually how Eastern became organized. But at first, before that, was uh, the building right next door here, Central University. Central University was formed in uh, 1874. In 1905, the state legislature, under the leadership of a lot of different people, began to organize a state system of education, and more importantly, to appropriate money for education. In 1906, finally legislation was passed at the state level to fund normal schools. And Eastern took over the old campus of Central University, taking over this building over here, as, and a few other buildings, and began to develop uh, a normal school education. At the same time, a school was formed in Bowling Green, uh, Western Kentucky State Teachers. And these two schools operated from that time, they divided up the state of Kentucky with a dividing line between the counties. And uh, you were only supposed to get students from those areas. The normal school system idea began in France. And basically it was to teach teachers at a lower level, elementary school or, or, or even high school level, what they needed to do to teach. A few years ago, I had the privilege to sit on the EKU Board of Regents as a faculty representative. And that was at a time when we were looking at EKU's strategic plan. And there were a lot of ideas put out about what is it that we should say we really shine in. And ultimately, what I think we recognize about EKU is that what we have to sell is great teaching. Model school uh, really uh, became the first part of the normal school to accept students. Model, as I understand it, is the only school like that still uh, operating in, uh, at a university. The Granny Richardson Spring One Room Schoolhouse is 120 years old. It was named after Martha Elkin Richardson, a teacher that taught in Brushy Mountain in Estill County. The school was named in her honor in 1900, six years before EKU State Normal School was established. In more recent years, EKU has made repairs to the flooring, replaced the siding on the structure. The school has a fresh look and is periodically used by professors of education to teach educational foundations courses, as well as Appalachian Studies courses. Now, Dr. Richard Day and myself are attempting to restore the schoolhouse to a type of self-guided museum, something that we hope will stand the test of time and be a continuous reminder of how and why EKU was started here in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains. So great teaching is the thing that I think makes EKU distinct from other universities. This is a friendly, more embracing, warmer kind of environment that our students seem to really love. I think we have a fine crop of students that come here every year. They are easy to work with and they're willing to learn. And that makes for a great environment for learning. 